So as you guys probably know, I'm someone who is not a huge fan of React content, which is somewhat ironic because now I'm doing it, but I would make the argument that I actually do React content a little bit better than most people. The reason why I'm against React content is because a lot of people like Hassan Piker will watch videos without adding anything to it. And I think if you want to do React content, it's totally fine as long as you add something to it, right? As long as you have something to say, then I think that's okay. And I would like to say that I do it with everything that I react to. And I try to I try to make that like an explicit uh, sort of tenet of my channel of value I have when I do reactions is that I want to add add something to it. I don't want to just watch something that I have nothing to say about and just like steal people's content. You know what I mean? I mean, for example, this is one video I made about it way back in the day when Leafy was like kind of at war with a bunch of Twitch streamers. This video was from August 11th, 2020. So quite a while ago, more than two years ago. And uh, this is when the kind of react drama was going on. And in this video, I talk about how the reactions are bad. And then this video got like watched by a bunch of streamers. Like I think Destiny watched it on stream. I think Xander Hall watched it and criticized it. And then in response to that, Dark Viper AU made a a reaction to this where he shit on Xander Hall and it just became a whole convoluted drama. Yeah, okay, so this is 500,000 views. A disingenuous, dense mother effer. Special five layers deep video response. So this is like a response. This is a response to Xander Hall's response to me, which is a response to Asmongold, basically. Hey everyone, I received an email that was interesting to the extent that I wanted to make this video in response to something that was shown to me within it. Uh, it, it this part here is probably the only part that really matters. I was recently watching a video of Xander Hall's in response to a video made by somebody called Turkey Tom about content theft. I'm sure you're well aware of the subject. In it, you are referenced. Here is the timestamp. And as you guys probably know, Dark Viper AU is someone who talks about React content a lot. He had a big drama blow up a little while ago, I think a year ago, because he made this big document about how React content harms everyone. Hello everyone, welcome to the introductory video for a series where I explain the inner workings of social media and how React content harms everyone except the Reactors. This is his kind of stance that React content harms everyone, it's bad for people. And he's a pretty big streamer, Dark Viper AU. The React drama goes back even farther to like exposing Jinx and stuff back in the day. If you guys remember, Jinx was a reaction channel. He would react to videos and not add, add anything to it apart from like one comment. He'd just play it in the corner of a screen on YouTube. And that was like a huge, there was a huge hate bandwagon against those people back in the day. But now it's kind of come back. You got I hate reaction videos from I hate everything from seven years ago. This is how, how far back this, this cancer of bad reaction videos goes. So you guys get the idea. This is basically what reaction content was back back then. And, and this is what streamers do now, right? People like Hassan Piker, this is what they do to this day. And uh, Pine Lee is a commentary channel you guys may know of. I don't really watch his videos. I find them kind of boring. Like Mr. Beast and the Cult of Money, selling anti-Semitic theories to teens. Like, I, I just don't really care. But he recently got in some interesting drama because... He says, the person who posted the VOD of Hassan reacting to my video is about to overtake my own video and views, all off stealing my title, thumbnail, and the video I spent three weeks working on in one day. Here's his video, how to radicalize a celebrity with Piley in the thumbnail. You've got, you know, all these celebrities in the back in test tubes. And here you've got Hassan, and they just put Hassan in front of Piley, which is funny because you can <laughs> you can see Piley's shirt in the background. They just slapped him in front and it says, how to radicalize a celebrity. They stole his title, and then it just says Hassan Abi reacts to Piley, and they're showing that it basically almost surpassed it in views within one day. So Piley made this video about it reacting to it, basically talking about the fact that Hassan got a bunch more views than him. We're going to watch it today and give our take on it. Does Hassan steal people's content? Does XQC steal people's content? Is it justified? What does Pinely have to say about it? I'm curious about it. So we're going to, we're going to find out today. We're going to watch this video titled how to steal a YouTube video. And we're going to steal his YouTube video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to talk about the greatest heist of all time. A heist so clean, a heist that's no risk and all reward, a heist that requires no work at all, the heist of of my own YouTube video. A few days ago, the target of this heist was out there in the open, ripe for the taken, and by that I mean, I decided to upload a YouTube video. It was a 30 minute long video essay that I made entirely from scratch. I made every single little element of it. And it took me about three weeks in total without any sort of breaks whatsoever. I had a deadline to reach, so I didn't even take a break during Christmas day. It took me multiple days to script the whole thing, to edit this video once I was done filming it. Even the thumbnail took me a bunch of hours. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of don't like this part of the video. I understand his frustration, but it just kind of comes across as like, oh guys, I I worked on Christmas. Guys feel bad for me because I worked on Christmas like that. Okay, that was your choice. And also, uh, this video, I don't think it's good enough that it should have taken three weeks. It should have taken you like a week to make, but we'll get past this point, okay? We'll forgive Pinely for the, the cringe intro. We'll get to the actual message, okay? But, you know, 
it was fine because I ended up making something that I was actually proud of. When I finished making this thing that I created from scratch, I was able at the end of the day to look at something that I made and was proud of and let other people see that as well. I'd even go as far to say that to me, that video felt like the best video I've ever made. Two days ago, I woke up to a lot of notifications on my phone. A lot of people letting me know that Hassan B, a really famous- Brandon Buckingham said Pinely doesn't celebrate Christmas. Oh yeah, isn't he- he's Jewish or something, right? So I guess he wouldn't celebrate Christmas. Famous streamer decided to react to my video, the one that I worked so much on, live on stream. And honestly, I found that to be really exciting. I personally watch Hassan's streams every now and again, so it was cool from that aspect, and- Yeah, you, you would like Hassan Piker, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would like him. Okay. It was also pretty beneficial for me. My video was now being viewed by tens of thousands of people live, who later on could and have checked out my channel right afterwards and subscribed. The stream involved him reacting to the takes that I made in the video, uh, saying some of his own, maybe disagreeing with me with some, uh, agreeing with a lot of them. Overall, he was very positive and nice to me. I don't know who this guy is, but I instantly like him, by the way. No, not because he's hot, you f And what can I say? I I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a good compliment. Obviously, it's fully understandable if other people would have a problem with something like this, but to me, a stream like this, whether it comes from Hassan or someone else, was fine. It was something that I consent to. What I'm not fine with, on the other hand, is this thing. Um, looks a bit familiar to you. So his issue is just that they, they basically stole his title and they stole his thumbnail, I assume. And the issue is not that the reaction in the first place happened. Honestly, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty fair complaint, right? It is kind of just like a market replacement in that case. But at the same time, like, the, the reaction itself is, it's double the length of the original. So clearly Hassan added some, some commentary to this. I mean, he doubled the length of the video. So if your contention is just with the thumbnail, then I guess that makes sense. But I don't know, it seems kind of like not a huge deal to me. Using other folks' content in your own is already a tricky minefield to to maneuver, but clip channels like that wholesale uploading the entire thing and erasing the original creator from its identity is like giving up and jumping belly first on the IEDs, hoping that some way to regulate reupload and stuff like that is available soon for creators like you, my friend. The thing is, I, I half want to agree with this, but at the same time, just because of how much that system would be abused if there was some way to regulate stuff like this, I probably would not be in favor of it. I would say it doesn't really matter that much. So there is a problem with this video's thumbnail, I'll admit that. But I, if I had to guess, like people aren't choosing to watch Hassan instead of Pinely. Like, if you're already a Hassan viewer and you watch Hassan's channel and you see Pinely's video, that's probably not preventing you from going and watching Pinely's video on your own. You know what I mean? If anything, if you see that, you're probably going to go subscribe to his channel because Hassan clearly liked him. He probably got some subscribers out of it. I don't know. It just kind of seems like complaining over almost nothing because at the end of the day, if Hassan wasn't adding to the content, which Hassan has done in the past, and that's a criticism I've had of him, then that would be a problem. But in this case, it seems like Hassan did really add to the content. So I don't, I, I do get the gray, but at the same time, I don't. But We'll keep watching. We'll, we'll see what else he says. This video is a one hour long clip of Hassan's reaction to my video. But from first glance, you might not realize that that's the case. You might mistakenly think that Hassan decided to uh, take a dip in the uh, video essay scene. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely formatted like that's the case. Look at that title and thumbnail. Only a genius uh, could come up with that. <laughs> the whole thing was posted on a channel that is not owned by Hassan in any way. It was posted by this this shadowy mysterious figure a shadowy mysterious figure that decided to completely rip me off while not even posting a link to my original video that this whole thing is based on but realistically i think the link complaint is kind of stupid because if people really want to find your channel based on it i mean your you, the channel name is in it and if you watch the reaction like hassan directly addresses you and says that he likes you so it's it's not like the most impossible thing in the world to find your channel if you really want to yes it does mention somewhere at the bottom that this is a reaction but this is obviously not the first thing that you noticed. And the thumbnail... Jesus Christ, the, the thumbnail is just... It was just a crime. They they slapped Hassan's face on top of mine. I got Mike Wazowski'd. I got I got Mike Wazowski'd and my own video. And and they did it so badly as well. You can still see my shirt underneath him. The whole purpose of the way that this is formatted is to trick someone going through. We got a donation that's relevant, so I'll read it. Confused Cabal for 129 says, "What prevents people from watching the original is Hassan forgetting to shout out the creator or link the original vid in any way." Yes, but in this case, it seems like Hassan did shout him out. Now. No? That Hassan decided to talk about how to radicalize a celebrity. Please ignore this less famous little 
piece of garbage. I mean, the thing is, you make this joke about it to be a point in your favor, but in reality, like, the reason why people would click on that video is because it's Hassan Piker, not because it's a video that you made, right? The reason why they would click on the, the one with his face on it is because they want to see his take, they want to see his thoughts on that subject. Whether whether or not it, it tricks people into thinking he made a video essay is another thing, but in this case, it's like, people wouldn't click the video if it was your face on that particular reaction, right? In less than one day since that video was posted, it was already coming pretty close to passing my one in views, and why wouldn't it? It's perfect for the algorithm. Uh, they switched my face with Hassan's way more famous face. The video is twice the length of my one because it is a reaction at the end of the day. It makes sense that it would do better than mine. The YouTube algorithm doesn't care which one of us spent more time on the video, the guy who actually made the thing, or the person who downloaded a clip of someone else reacting to the thing that I made and posting it on their channel. It doesn't matter. If it presents itself in a more clickable way by having a more famous person attached to it, then that's all that matters. But that just kind of, that's not just the algorithm. That sounds like that's what people want to watch. Like if people want to watch Hassan reacting to your video more than they want to watch you, then I mean, you can complain about people's preferences, but that's their preference to watch it. You know what I mean? It sounds like kind of a cope to me. Like people just want to watch Hassan talk about what you said more than they want to hear what you said. You know, that's kind of a harsh reality. And it sounds harsh when I say it, but that, that in this, in this scenario, apparently that was the case, right? I was a lot more fine with Hassan's reaction to my video on its own is that you click on Hassan's stream to watch Hassan. You don't click on it to watch someone talk about this topic. His reaction to my video was just one segment out of a nine hour long stream. But when you talk about this VOD channel, that's not really the case. This is a channel that's competing against my video, a video with the same topic, obviously. Now, here's the thing about the competition aspect of it, right? I think that competition on YouTube is not as real as people think it is. Like, I'll give you an example. When two people react to the same video, if Aiden Ross reacts to one video, and if Kai Sinat reacts to another video, I don't think that, like, if one of them gets it out first, then, like, one person is going to be the one that gets the views, and the other person is not going to get any views. I don't think that's how it works. I think that more views on more videos in general just contributes to a greater, like, more popular creator economy. So ultimately, I understand Pineley's frustration with Hassan's video, but I also don't think that his video would have gotten more views if Hassan's reaction hadn't been posted with the same thumbnail. You know what I mean? Like, once again, I'm sympathetic to Pineley as someone who does put a lot of time into my videos, but at the same time, it's just kind of a nothing complaint a little bit. I got a lot of really nice replies to this tweet, but I also got some pretty interesting replies. People were telling me that this channel that posted that clip is not like a fan channel at all. It's an actual business. Some people told me that this channel has copyright claimed other clip channels, which is insane. So I guess this video is less about the issue of the reaction and more about this other guy like running some fake re-upload channel where he DMCA's other people's uh <laughs> like re-uploads of Hassan and he just steals Hassan's content. I mean, that's kind of funny. That's pretty f***ed up that that guy can even get away with that on YouTube, but I don't know how you stop that without just getting YouTube directly involved. I wonder if they're going to be. This guy that I actually emailed twice during this whole situation, finally replied to my email and took the video down. And isn't that just ridiculous? I had to, to make this big scene out of it, tweet this thing out, get other YouTubers to support me and quote tweet the thing, which I do really appreciate, but it's just so silly that we had to go through this entire process just to make this one person, this one channel, out of a network of bot channels to stop stealing my stuff. What do you want to happen? You want there to be like a YouTube? And this is my problem with this. It's like, okay, th this is this is a cope part. What do you want there to be? Like some system where like YouTube like sends your, your video to an internal review team of 50 people who have to check and make sure that you're not re-uploading someone else's like, you know, fake re-upload react content. Like, I just don't, what is even the issue here? Like, you got the result you wanted. You saw an issue where someone was stealing Hassan's content, and by proxy, you felt your content was being stolen with a thumbnail. You complained about that issue. You got it resolved in a favorable manner where the channel is now down, and now you're like, oh, it's ridiculous that this was even an issue in the first place. What do you mean? Like, bad people exist who do bad things in the world. Like, what, I don't know what kind of, what you're expecting to happen from this, you know what I mean? I don't know what your complaint is even at this point. Like, YouTube literally did the right thing. And I'm not someone who wants to be defending YouTube all the time and saying that they're cool, because YouTube does mess up a lot. YouTube is, is a, a website and a company that I think people should be critical of. But in this case, like, YouTube didn't do anything wrong. They actually did the right thing. Hassan, being the larger channel that he is, has a better connection with YouTube and a better ability to strike down videos like these. And... Uh, what a, what a messed up little system. I'm just a tiny little example in this huge, huge field. There are probably channels 
much smaller than mine who don't have this platform on another social media, uh, which they can make like this big fuss about this thing to get people to actually care about this thing that they made getting stolen like that. Well, I mean, that's the thing about it, right? Like, if you have a, a you know, a video sharing platform where anyone can upload videos, you're going to have some bad actors who are stealing content in the mix, right? That's just kind of a, a consequence of it. And that's not something that you can necessarily prevent, like, all the time, you know? It's not something you can preemptively stop. When you see it, you can tell YouTube, and in this case, they actually took care of it for you, which is nice. That's honestly more than they needed to do, because they have a lot of, of other things to deal with in terms of content moderation and just stuff in general. But they actually fixed the issue for you. You know, I kind of understand his, his complaint over overall. I, I do, I do understand the frustration with people reacting to your stuff, but at the same time, like, I used to be more of the, of the sort of, you know, opinion that, oh, well, it steals views from other creators, but ultimately, the people that I see are the most popular on YouTube are also the ones that get reacted to the most by people like Asan, by people like XQC, and I think that getting that notoriety, like, okay, you can argue maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe you had a few views stolen, but overall, it's a net positive when someone famous reacts to your stuff, especially if they like it, then they only get more eyes on your content and get people to subscribe to you, so it's probably a net positive, and not even say like even I'll, you know i'll call hassan scummy for not adding to the content sometimes or i'll you know i'll say critical sometimes doesn't add to the content enough i know that i know maybe they try their best now but sometimes they don't add to it enough but even if they don't add to the content a ton chances are if if the person watching their stream enjoys the video that they reacted to enough that they would subscribe to you if they found it on their own on youtube then you'll probably get a subscriber out of them anyway out of their stream so it doesn't change things that much i would argue what do you guys think about this i want to hear you, what, what would you guys think in chat if you want to uh put your stuff in the in the, in the youtube chat i'll read i'll read what you have to say. Renforia says, I feel like it can help too. Like this one creator, Tuv, blew up to over a mil subs because of Moist Critical. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like overall, I think that when these big channels react to you, it's only a net positive um, ultimately. So yeah, that's that's the Pinely drama. I know it's a little old, but I just wanted to react to it, give my take on it. I guess check out the rest of his videos if you want. I haven't watched them in quite a while. You can see there, there was a time when I liked his stuff, but he kind of departed from my from my kind of interest as a content creator. But you know, it looks like he's doing well. Looks like his channel's doing well. Good for him. Hopefully he keeps succeeding in that way. All right, guys, that probably wraps up what I got to say about the Pinely thing.